Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. What is going on today? Greetings and welcome to another day out in the landscape. Uh, today in this video, I want to continue uh, talking about my experience with the Sigma FPL camera. Uh, again, this is a disclaimer. I bought this camera with my own money. Sigma haven't paid me to say anything about this camera and I'm uh, voluntarily sharing this experience uh, for the sake of transparency. In this video, I'm going to share what I love about the Sigma FPL system, but I'm also going to share where I've struggled and where uh, I've had to find uh, solutions around the, the, the niggle or the challenge or whatever it is um, that I've uh, encountered. So let's start with, let's start with a negative because I think that's a good place to start. So you'll notice that there is not an L bracket uh, on this camera. Um, that's because um, as far as I can tell right now in, this is February uh, 2022, I cannot buy a native L bracket that fits this camera. I've currently gone through three generic L brackets, which work to some extent. Uh, they either stick out too far, too far, or they cover the battery door, or there's an or, or, or that sits uh, on, the, on the end of every single one um, that I've purchased. Um, one of my photo buddies uh, is into like metalwork and milling and stuff like that, and I'm probably gonna have to take one of these generic L brackets and bespokeify it in order to fit this camera. And that has been a little bit frustrating. There's a company called Nice E Rig, N I C E Y R I G. You'll find them on eBay. Um, they did a um, like a housing for this camera, uh, which I have actually used, and it does work. But you need to attach an Arca Swiss bracket to either side. It then ends up actually being quite bulky, adding to the weight. It's also not particularly comfortable to use, so I ditch that. So. That's a, that's a negative uh, straight away. What I'm doing at the moment is I've got the um, uh, palm, um, what do you call it? Palm rest attachment that you can get for uh, the camera. And then I've got an Arca Swiss plate. If I want to go portrait, then I'm gonna have to tilt. See if I can do this with one hand. I'm gonna have to tilt it like that, which is not ideal. But at the moment, that is my only mechanism for being able to um, change the orientation of the camera and make it a portrait. So let's balance the negative with a positive, and that is the opportunity to be able to use EF lenses. Give me a second, because in my bag, uh, so this is a Canon uh, 17 to 40 full frame EF lens. It's quite an old lens now. I managed to pick it up cheap second hand, but on the back of it, Hopefully you can see that is a Sigma adapter, which is the MC21. And that enables me to mount any EF lens onto this L mount camera. I will cover more on lenses in a later video because lens choice has actually been a little bit more problematic than I imagined it would be. So I'm gonna cover that in a later video, but the opportunity to be able to use Canon EF lenses with this camera and for those of you who are in the know, you will know how many different types of Canon EF lens there are out there. That has been a significant bonus in terms of lens choice, in addition to native L mount lenses. So let's try and seesaw. So we've had a, a challenge, a like, now we're gonna have another challenge. Battery life. Battery life in this camera is rubbish. Uh, I am used to being able to go out into the landscape with my Olympus system with two batteries and those two batteries will last me all day and I'll be using the camera all day, maybe even for video as well. I am lucky if I go out and do a sunrise and I chew through one whole battery. That is how bad uh, battery life is on this camera. Now, my way around it is to have a lot more batteries. So I was... Um, I gifted a free extra battery by Sigma when I bought the camera. And on top of that, I bought two more. 
I also have a couple of mains chargers to enable me to charge those batteries. And I've also picked up a USB battery charger from a company called JJC. Um, so I now can recharge all four batteries. My way around that challenge is I'm just being a lot more careful with switching the camera on and off and optimizing my use of the batteries that I've got. I'm also using the EVF a lot more than I'm using the LCD. I'm kind of hoping with it being a smaller screen that it uses slightly less power than a larger screen. One of these days I'll actually go and go out and do, you know, one with the EVF and one with the LCD and do a comparison. But immediately I found battery life to be a little bit of a challenge. Uh, and my way around it is to go and buy some more batteries. It's not ideal, but I'm working within the system that I've got and I'm finding a solution to make it work for me. And that's my solution. Let's keep flip-flopping between like and don't like. So let's do a like. This is a 61 megapixel camera. I can't get away from the fact that that's a lot of megapixels. I love the ability to be able to crop without losing quality. Now I know I can do that on the Olympus and I get perfectly acceptable results with the Olympus, but I can crop on this without hardly losing any quality at all. And that is a um, quality that I'm starting to appreciate uh, a lot more. Um, a, a caveat to that is I'm being very careful that it doesn't make me lazy because I'm very picky behind the camera with my compositions because I want to capture as much in camera as I possibly can. But I know that if I get the image from this camera on the big screen and I just want to crop in, crop down, whatever, because I feel that behind the screen I can actually make the composition stronger, I'm not having that slight nagging worry that by doing so I'm, I'm, I'm ditching quality with this. I'm not ditching quality and that gives me a considerable amount of comfort, especially when I decide to try and print it uh, A2 or even larger. But the caveat is I'm being very careful that it doesn't make me lazy. Let's do a don't like. Focus peaking. For those of you who don't know what focus peaking in is, this is where uh, with manual focus, the um, uh, what's in focus on the screen changes color. Um, I prefer it changes color to white and it shimmers white uh, when that uh, item is in focus. On this camera, uh, focus peaking is either on or off across the entire display, regardless of whether you're using um, uh, manual focus or not. And by that, I mean, when I use manual focus, it zooms in on a portion uh, and then I you know, twist the manual focus ring and I get those, that little sort of shimmering color to, chat, to tell me that I'm in focus, great then when that zoom goes away, that item is still shimmering in the L on the LCD. And that's, I find that really, really distracting. I want to use focus peaking when I manually focus. Once I stop doing that, focus peaking can go away. So Sigma, if you're watching, can we have a firmware update please, where it just shows focus peaking when you zoom in and manual focus, and then it goes away uh, when the LCD screen goes back to normal. Pretty pleased with bells on. A like. On my last video, I mentioned about being intrigued with the concept of ISO 6. I've now had the opportunity to use ISO 6 so that I can do long exposures or reasonably long exposures without having to resort to neutral density filters. And I absolutely love that flexibility. I sometimes forget that I've got it, um, but I actually used it this morning. Um, uh, you know, light levels were changing quickly. I just cranked it back, checked focus, pushed the button, and I had, I think I had a 25 second exposure straight away. Just a fantastic feature. One caveat to that though, is it's blooming slow. Um, so obviously you're waiting for the exposure to happen, but then once it's done, the camera's computer is chewing away for at least a, as long again, um, if not longer, so I think I calculated it this morning. I was doing two second exposures and then waiting for the camera for eight to 10 seconds before I could use it again. So it's a great feature, but it does come with a price. And it's a price that I'm, I'm learning to deal with. To be fair, with the Olympus system, I always had noise reduction switched on. 
But of course, noise reduction uh, runs for as long as the shutter has been open. So this morning, it would have been a two second exposure and two second noise reduction. I've not got that with this. But I think the positive, the plus of using it, probably outweighs the sitting there and waiting for it. Let's do a don't like. Moving the focus point around requires you to use two buttons. Um, one to select a focus option and then another to say that you want to move the point around. And I haven't found a function within the menu that just allows me to go to the last option. If anybody knows how to do it, please tell me because I would love to be able to do it. So when, situ when situations are changing quickly and I want to quickly be able to move the focus point, I have to remember I have to push two buttons to get that to that option. And that is a little bit frustrating. So Sigma, firmware update. You know what I'm saying? I mentioned in my last video that this was all about scratching the full frame itch. I have done comparisons at A2, uh, printing at A2, between my original Olympus system and this system. Same image, same conditions, and there's no getting away from it. There is more quality in here. There is nothing wrong with the Olympus system. I want to make that really, really clear, but there is more detail that you can capture with this particular camera. And I know there's a penalty for it. Uh, I absolutely get that, but I'm absolutely loving the increase in quality, especially when I print at A2. A3 or A4, honestly and truly, can't tell the difference. Really cannot tell the difference. Doing a greetings card, couldn't tell whether I did it on this or the Olympus. But the larger print sizes, you can tell. Even at normal viewing distance, you can tell that there is definitely a quality difference. A3 and A4, agnostic completely, use both quite happily. And I will continue to use both, I should hasten to add. I'm gonna finish this with a whole load of don't likes. Um, and these are don't likes that I can't do anything about. These are also don't likes that to some extent I knew that I was taking on when I bought into the camera system. So there is no sensor shake technology to get rid of dust. Um, I can't remember the last time I cleaned my Olympus sensor because of the uh, dust shake technology that it's got. Uh, this sensor, so I've had this camera three, maybe four months now, I have already got a spot uh, on the sensor, which I'm having to edit out in software. I would love it to have that function, but I haven't got it. <laughs> I have to kind of keep thinking about all the positives that I get out of it to remind myself that all I'm having to do is spot. Now, one thing I will say is even with the Olympus system, I only change the lenses with the camera switched off. I always have the camera facing down. All of those things to minimize dust, I, I already did. And I continue to do in order to minimize uh, that impact. This camera also doesn't have in-camera stabilization. So some of the lens choices that I'm making, and I will talk more about lens choice in another video, Certainly for the longer lenses, I'm needing to buy lenses that have got some kind of stabilization in order to keep that quality. Because I do sometimes take the camera off at the tripod and just react to the situation around me. I mentioned on the last video that an EVF was crucial and critical for me because of being able to use the camera without glasses. Attaching the EVF is a pain in the bum. Uh, there's three connections plus a prong and you have to be really precise about attaching it just right otherwise it just won't go on and you can't force it you have to get those three items really right in the right place otherwise it won't go on and I have read um, reviews on forums where people have broken this very easily because they've got frustrated with it also the eye cup this thing here I've lost one of these eye cups already they do come off relatively easily and in the UK, they're very, very difficult to source. Uh, fortunately, I know one of the Olympus ambassadors and I reached out to him and Sigma sent me one for free. That's fantastic customer service, but it's definitely made me a little bit more careful when using my EVF. My final uh, don't like uh, is the camera is sold with the opportunity to charge the battery using a, a USB-C connection which is great. 
However, you lose that capability when you're using the EVF, which is really, really disappointing. I understand it's because the EVF actually powers itself using the USB, yeah, USB-C socket, and that's why you lose it. But it's, you know, in all the advertising blurb, it's one of the things that they point out, but it's not really made clear that you lose it when you get this. Um, so it's a, you know, personally, I think it's a little bit of a fail on Sigma, if I'm being perfectly honest. Um, I've found my way around it. Um, you know, I've got mains chargers and, and all that jazz. Um, and I've got USB-C, separate um, USB charger for the batteries. But um, yeah, that's a real shame. So, likes and dislikes. The camera is flashing at me saying the battery's going flat. Likes and dislikes, very personal to me. Hopefully it's been uh, useful. Uh, more Sigma videos are coming up, uh, so stay tuned. Until then, uh, like, comment and subscribe, and I shall see you on my next video. Take care, stay safe and stay well. Bye for now.